Question number 161, goblet cells are present in and the options given are first option squamous epithelium, second option compound epithelium, third option transitional epithelium and fourth option columnar epithelium. Goblet cells are mucus secreting cells and they are modified columnar cells. Goblet cells are present in columnar epithelium and pseudostratified epithelium. So, correct answer to this question is option number 4. Let's see other options also. Squamous epithelium. This epithelium is present on inner lining of alveoli, inner lining of blood vessels, etc. Second option, compound epithelium. This epithelium is present on dry surface of skin, moist surface of buccal cavity, inner lining of pharynx, esophagus, etc. Third option, transitional epithelium. It is present on inner lining of urinary bladder, ureter and renal pelvis. So, correct answer to this question is option number 4. Question number 162. Match the following. A. Competitive inhibitor of succinic dehydrogenase. Competitive inhibitor of succinic dehydrogenase is malonate. So, A matches with Substrate of succinic dehydrogenase is succinate and malonate, which is competitive inhibitor. It closely resembles with succinate, the substrate in structure and malonate competes with succinate for the active site of succinic dehydrogenase enzyme. Now come to B. Possess glycosidic bonds. Glycosidic bonds are present in cellulose. So B matches with fourth. Cellulose is a homopolymer of beta-glucose and beta-glucose units are linked by the glycosidic bonds. Beta-glucose is a monosaccharide and monosaccharides in a polysaccharide are linked by glycosidic bonds. C, homopolymer of NAG and C matches with 3, homopolymer of NAG is chitin. NAG stands for N-acetyl glucosamine and chitin is homopolymer of N-acetyl glucosamine. This chitin is present in exoskeleton of arthropods and in fungal cell wall. D secondary metabolite. Example of secondary metabolite is morphine. So D matches with 1. Let's see this combination is given in which option? A with 2, B with 4, C with 3 and D with 1. This is given in option number 3. So, correct answer to this question is option number 3. Moving to the next question. Question number 163. Triploblastic and acylomate animals are exemplified by and the options given are platyhelaments, sponges, nidarians and annelids. First option, platyhelaments. Platyhelaments are triploblastic as all three germ layers are present in them, that is ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. But mesoderm completely fills the space between outer ectoderm and inner endoderm. So, they are acylomates. So, correct answer to this question is option number one. Let's see other options also. Second option, sponges. Sponges are acylomates, but they are not triploblastic. So, this cannot be a correct answer. Third option, nidarians. Nidarians are acylomates, but they are not triploblastic, they are diploblastic. So, this cannot be a correct answer. Fourth option, annelids. Annelids are triploblastic, but they are not acylomates, they are coelomates. So, this cannot be a correct answer. So, correct answer to this question is option number one. Now, proceeding to the next question. Question number 164, select the set of conditions in urine which are indicative of diabetes mellitus and the options given are first option proteinuria and renal calculi. Proteinuria is presence of protein in the urine which can be seen in case of glomerulonephritis. Renal calculi is deposition of calcium salts, example calcium oxalate and other salts within the kidney. So, this cannot be a correct answer. Second option, uremia and proteinuria. Uremia is increase in the level of urea in the blood and proteinuria is presence of protein in the urine. This is not seen in case of diabetes mellitus. So, this cannot be a correct answer. Third option, ketonuria and polyuria. Ketonuria is presence of ketone bodies in the urine and polyuria is passage of excessive urine. And these are seen in case of diabetes mellitus. These two conditions in urine are indicative of diabetes mellitus. So, correct answer to this question is option number three. 
Option number fourth, polyuria without glycosuria. In diabetes mellitus, there is a hyperglycemia and when the blood glucose level increases more than 180 milligram per deciliter of blood, then it starts appearing in the urine also. So, diabetes mellitus, in this case, glycosuria occurs. But here in the option without glycosuria is written, so this cannot be a correct answer. Polyuria without glycosuria, this can be seen in case of diabetes insipidus, which is due to the deficiency of ADH. So correct answer to this question is option number three. Proceeding to the next question, question number 165. Identify the correct set of substances having glycosidic bond in their structure and the options given are first option glycerol and lecithin. In both glycerol and lecithin, glycosidic bonds are not present. So this cannot be a correct answer. Second option, triglyceride and cellulose. In triglyceride, glycosidic bonds are not present. In cellulose, glycosidic bonds are present. Cellulose is a polysaccharide and in a polysaccharide, monosaccharide units are linked by the glycosidic bonds. But this cannot be a correct answer because of the triglyceride. Third option, glycogen and adenylic acid. In glycogen, glycosidic bonds are present. Glycogen is a polysaccharide and in polysaccharide, monosaccharide units are linked by the glycosidic bonds. So, this is correct. Adenylic acid. In adenylic acid, nitrogenous base is linked to sugar by N glycosidic bonds. So, glycosidic bond is present in adenylic acid also. So, correct answer to this question is option number three. Now, let's discuss option fourth also. Chitin. Chitin is again a polysaccharide, a homopolymer of N acetyl glucosamine. So, here glycosidic bonds are present. In cholesterol, glycosidic bonds are not present. So, correct answer to this question is option number three moving to the next question